Hello, my name is Aurora Orlani Jacobson. Before I tell you my story, I'd like to ask you a question. Did you have ever heard of the Portuguese man of war? On a trip from Cape Town to St. Helena, my father suddenly shouted, Quick, quick, come and look! Here's a Portuguese man of war, one of the most poisonous jellyfish. Although my father is quite knowledgeable about animals, this time he was wrong. After it drifted away, I told him, a Portuguese man of war is not a jellyfish at all. It's a colony of polyps. That was one of the things I learned as a boat kid. Until last year, I lived on a catamaran sailboat named Darmabam III. The only other people on the boat were my father and my mother. We didn't sail all the time. Sometimes we stayed in a place for a night and sometimes for a few months. My 10 birthdays were on 10 different shores. We used our dinghy to go ashore and to visit other boats. Most of my friends lived on other boats. My school was on our boat and my parents were my teachers. Before I was four, I thought all people lived on boats. <laughs> According to my parents, when I was two and a half, we were invited to a friend's house. There I looked out a window and asked, where's the sea and where's the dinghy? It took us seven years and eight months to sail around the world, but unfortunately, my memories don't go that far because we moved on the boat when I was only one year and 11 months old. The first few days of every journey, I was always seasick. I'd lie in mama's bed, sleep, and think. Believe me, when you've got nothing else to do, you start to think. I thought about all kinds of things, the birds, the f my friends, yeah, and how yucky the anti-motion sickness pills were. Sometimes when it got boring, I just simply used my fingers. They can form creatures and one can fight against the other. I still remember the nice sailing days when I was not seasick, the excitement of getting near a new land. Although I didn't have internet or a phone, boat life wasn't boring for me. I made up cool games by jumping around and hanging on the boom and so on. I'd like to go back to the specific boat, but when I can finally have my own boat, I'll be an adult and I won't play my games anymore. Or, have you ever seen a 50 or 70 year old hanging upside down through a hatch? <laughs> Swimming was another thing I really enjoyed. When I swam amongst the waves, I took my boogie board to be a dolphin. Turk was light, her secret name, took me under the boat, where she told me it was the bottom of the sea because of the darkness. Instead of her real name, I told my mom a different one because she wouldn't reveal her name to anyone else but me. A boat is a small space and I used it all. You may think I'm crazy, but I even miss the dusty corners of Darmabam 3. Some were my best hiding places, places to spy upon my parents, where they would talk about love and all sorts of stuff. I felt excited behind the red curtain with beads and beads of dolphins upon dolphins. There I could see through and not be seen. When my parents were not looking, I did all kinds of forbidden stuff. Climbing down the ropes to a mooring buoy, almost sliding off and trying to get back on without my mom noticing. How I miss it when the boat was at anchor, under the star-strewn sky of the forehead and the cool breeze making the sea ripple under the clouds. Alone, with no one watching, I sang my songs to nature. When it rained at night, it may have been cold, but truly a blessing for me and nature. The tiny water droplets fell, first slowly, then quicker, onto the mirror-like sea. I could see the stars reflect upon the beautiful surface. The fresh, salty smell of home and nature surrounding me made me feel as free as a wild animal. Papa and Mama read me loads of books before I learned to read. Papa read me German stories and Mama read me Chinese ones. And beyond our boat, we communicated with others in English. At three years and eight months old, I officially started learning English. In general, my education crazy mom gave me a lot of hard and horrible homework, and to tell the truth, I didn't want to do it at all. <laughs> she made me. We started class after breakfast, the first hour German, the second Chinese, and then we did the rest of the day the class from Melbourne Calvert School from Maryland, USA. Unlike kids on land who went to regular schools, I didn't have summer or winter vacations, and that meant I only had to stay at home, never got to travel.
Yes, I can speak three languages fluently. Except for Chinese, I can read and write the other two very well, but I wouldn't recommend my mom's teaching. It's extremely hard. She always argues that I have at least four hours of free time per day, on weekends even more, but my friends have a lot more than me. At least one thing my father and I have in common. We both really like all kinds of animals. Since I was very young, we caught little fish, clams, shells, and crabs together, put them in a bucket of water, and then I'd go looking for sand, stones, and sticks to make their new home. When I got older, we caught tadpoles and insects too. Sadly, the frogs always jump into the sea, and insects don't live long anyway. Then when I was nearly eight, he decided to give me a surprise, a real pet. Hamsty, my little gold hamster, was my first ever furry pet. And a few months after we left the boat, I got Schnurri, my gray cat. Every time we arrived in a new harbor, we'd look for boats with kids on board. After my dad dropped the dinghy down, We'd zoom to them. My parents would make polite conversations with the adults, and I'd observe the kids. Not all boat kids were the kind I like, but I didn't have much choice. I prefer girls of my age, but if they were scarce, I'd settle for anyone who can speak English, German, or Chinese, since my parents are extremely boring playmates. Really, they lack imagination, and it's very difficult to play with them. One of my best friends was an Australian girl called Darian. We met in Chagos and we played together in Mauritius, Madagascar, and Trinidad. At that time, I had just finished reading the Endless Game series of Arthur Scott Card. We two would go together in big cardboard boxes to travel to anywhere. Instantly, we got out to be in Sydney, her hometown, or outer space, where we flew among stars and landed on planets. Another time when I was still fascinated by dinosaurs, Dylan and I talked about being paleontologists. We planned to buy a long tail boat like they have in Thailand to keep ourselves mobile when we went out digging. August 2013, I went into the first real school in my life. All my classmates had already been together for three years, so it was not very easy to join existing cliques. In October, I made a party at our new home to get closer friends, but to get even closer friends, however, was still not easy. I persuaded Lucy to share her secrets with me, for example, after a long talk in a school garden. Now I am a fifth grader at Augusta Victoria Schule in Flensburg, which is a gymnasium or junior high school. I've got several good friends in my class and also the friends from my old elementary school. We visit each other by bike and bus and talk to each other by WhatsApp and phone. Many people ask me whether I was bored on the boat. And I find this question funny. How could I have been? I had the big foredeck, the sheets and ropes, origami creatures, and stuffed animals. When I was tired of reading, I could play alone. And even when I was seasick, I had my finger creatures to make fun stories with. The second most frequently asked question would be, did you have any friends at all? As I mentioned before, I had many friends on boats and some on land as well. We arranged our playtime in place by VHF, short range radio, and talked to each other by VHF, yeah, two as well. And we visited each other by kayak and dinghy. It is always sad to leave friends, for us even more so, because it would be very difficult for us to see each other ever again. When the parents decide to say different routes, it would be time to say goodbye. In Singapore, when I was six, I first realized the fact that I'd never seen one of my old friends again. They simply vanished. And when I was seven, I wrote this. Those were the days, my friend. I thought they'd never end. But they did. I wish they'd come again. Then comes question number three. Compare and contrast your homeschooling and the school now. Sounds like one of my essay questions, I'm afraid to say. <laughs> but okay, I prefer the school now because we have breaks and recesses and there are many friends to play with and talk to. I dislike my mom's teaching because she's so achievement-oriented that her lessons are much less fun than the school's. <laughs> if we ask around, I'm sure that most children don't really care how much they learn and nor do I, despite my mom's best efforts to explain why all this is necessary. 
but in general, I love to learn as long as I don't have to practice repeatedly. <laughs> all in all, growing up on the boat and being homeschooled have not brought me any bad side effects, not that I'm aware of anyway. On the contrary, many people comment that I know a lot about science and geography, not to mention languages. Believe me, it's not so difficult to remember a country you've been there. And as for science, what would you do during a long journey when you're not allowed on the foredeck? Of course, I had to kill time by reading books and children's encyclopedias. When my German classmates were learning about Schleswig-Holstein and Kiel Canal, we boat kids were watching Galapagos, Kiribati, Ashma Reef, and Chagos. Madagascar lemurs were on our shoulders. Some of us were touching gigantic tortoises, and others were swimming with green turtles and manta rays. After we witnessed the bloody scene of catching and killing fish for food, we learned to respect nature. We also learned to consume the minimal resources. Fresh water and electricity on boats are precious. I still don't know whether to hate or love my parents for making me leave the boat. Often I get frustrated trying to sort my mixed feelings. I'm well known here and have got many good friends, but I also really miss my boat life, except for my homeschooling part. I really hated that. <laughs> okay, now that I've talked about all my complaints, I'd like to thank my parents, especially my mother. Without their discipline, I wouldn't be talking here. All the subjects are relatively easy at school, and I stepped off the boat without having a problem to get new friends. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to become a vet. <laughs> I might become a vet. But when you're not even 11 years old, not many things are for sure anyway. But at least one thing I can be absolutely sure of, and that is I will never forget Dumb Bum 3. <laughs>